The Ultimate Guide to Dyspraxia. In this video, we'll be talking about various topics concerning dyspraxia. So we will be telling stories, asking questions and making observations. Because I have dyspraxia, this one is close to the heart. And if you have dyspraxia, then this video should provide value. Now this is education and entertainment. So with that being said, let's analyze this train of thought accordingly. Part one, what is dyspraxia? Dyspraxia, also known as Developmental Coordination Disorder, DCD, is a neurological condition that affects motor coordination and planning. It can impact fine and gross motor skills, making activities like writing, tying shoelaces and physical coordination difficult. Dyspraxia also can affect organizational abilities, memory, time management and sometimes speech. While it doesn't affect intelligence, it can cause challenges in daily tasks. People with dyspraxia may experience frustration due to their struggles with physical coordination, but early diagnosis and intervention can help manage its impact. Part two, how is dyspraxia diagnosed? Dyspraxia is diagnosed through motor skill assessments, developmental history reviews, and sometimes neurological evaluations by healthcare professionals, such as pediatricians, occupational therapists or educational psychologists. Part 3. How many people have dyspraxia? So it's estimated around 5 to 6 percent of the global population has dyspraxia. So in Britain over 2 million people are affected with approximately 1.4 million individuals in England and Wales. It is a lifelong condition but symptoms can improve with age and support. Despite being under-recognized, dyspraxia impacts a significant number of people globally, highlighting the importance of awareness and support for those affected. Part four, why is it important to understand dyspraxia? Understanding dyspraxia is essential for creating inclusive environments that accommodate the challenges individuals face. It reduces the stigma and empowers those affected to thrive in education, work and daily life. Early recognition and support can help people with dyspraxia reach their full potential. Part five, a good strategy for dyspraxia students going to university. Students with dyspraxia attending university can benefit from using organizational tools such as planners, reminders, and assistive technology. They should also seek support from disability services, which can provide accommodations like extra time on exams, accessible note-taking methods, and physical adjustments to learning environments. Part six, best ways for people with dyspraxia to integrate into work. For individuals with dyspraxia, Successful workplace integration involves creating a supportive environment that accounts for their specific challenges. The Equality Act 2010 in the UK mandates reasonable adjustments to help those with disabilities, including dyspraxia, to succeed in the workplace. Employers can offer tailored support such as assistive technology, flexible working hours, or modified tasks that reduce the need for fine motor skills, providing a clear communication, written instructions and additional training can also be valuable. An inclusive culture that values different abilities and provides ongoing support helps individuals with dyspraxia excel at work while contributing fully to their roles. Part seven. Leon's story of becoming a manager. Leon, diagnosed with dyspraxia, once struggled with coordination and task management. However, with supportive colleagues, 
and reasonable adjustments like task planning tools, Leon thrived. Over time, Leon developed strong leadership skills and became a manager, inspiring his team with his persistence and adaptability. Part 8. Dyspraxia does not affect IQ. Sally's story. Sally was a brilliant woman with an IQ of 130 and she has dyspraxia. Despite her high intelligence, she struggled with activities requiring fine motor skills like handwriting and physical coordination. Throughout school, her difficulties were often misinterpreted as laziness or lack of ability. However, once diagnosed with dyspraxia, Sally received the support she needed, including assistive technologies and accommodations for her learning style. Her intellectual strengths began to shine through in her academic work, and she pursued a career in theoretical physics. Today, Sally uses her remarkable intelligence to contribute groundbreaking research to her field, proving that dyspraxia does not limit intellectual ability. Part 9. Getting support. To get support for dyspraxia, seek an assessment from a healthcare professional, such as a GP, occupational therapist or a specialist. Schools, universities and workplaces offer accommodations under the Equality Act. Support groups, assistive technology and therapy can help manage challenges and improve daily functioning. Part 10. Supporting people with dyspraxia in a moral world. In a moral world, supporting people with dyspraxia to be the best version of themselves is rooted in the principles of equality, compassion and fairness. Every individual, regardless of their neurological differences, deserves the opportunity to reach their full potential. By providing support, we acknowledge their inherent worth and dismantle barriers that unfairly limit their opportunities. Dyspraxia does not define a person's ability to contribute meaningfully to society. With understanding and accommodations, people with dyspraxia can thrive and excel in their personal and professional lives. Empowering individuals with dyspraxia fosters inclusion and diversity enriching our communities with a wider range of talents and perspectives. It's our collective responsibility to ensure no one is excluded due to the challenges beyond their control. In doing so, we create a more just, compassionate society where everyone is valued and supported to succeed, reflecting the moral obligation to treat others with dignity and respect. So that's the end of the video. If you want to support the channel, like, subscribe and watch the content. So if you want to support the channel, like, subscribe and support the content. Now, as some of you know, I have a social enterprise called NeuroExpression, which is about empowering neurodivergent people. If you want to know more about this, then consider downloading the free PDF called What is Dyspraxia? You can get this from my website and the link will be in the description. And with that being said, I sincerely hope this video provided value.